Hey, I'm RC and this is the episode 18 about creating a multiplayer game in Node.js. If you haven't watched last episode, then I highly recommend you to do so by clicking the annotation on the screen. So in this video, I'm planning to cover item management. Um, so I've already covered that in my single player tutorial series, and I will highly recommend you to go check it out um, because and, and understand um, the logic behind it because I'm going to reuse a lot of code I've written in that video. So click the notation on the screen and make sure you, you understand the code because for multiplayer it's going to get a little bit more tricky. Okay, so before getting started with item management, there's a few things I will need to change with the overall structure of the project. Um, so the first one is that right now we only have two files, two giant files, one for the server um, app.js and one for the client index.html. And they are kind of getting big. Um, so I got a lot of people asking me, hey, how can I make a multiple file project? And with Node.js, it's relatively easy. So um, I'm gonna take all the entity codes, so the entity, the bullet, and the plier, and we're going to make a new file out of that. So I'm just going to save, call it entity.js, um, in the same um, directory than app.js. And then from here, I will load the file. And to load the file, it's require.slash entity. So dot slash means that it's in the current directory. So entity is in the same folder then my entity, um, app is in the same folder, the entity. So I only have to do a dot slash and then the name of the file without the dot yes. If the entity was, for example, in the folder client, then I would simply write client. And to go back one directory, you do the double dot. But anyway, it's not really that important. I'm gonna cover that more in detail when the project will get bigger. So what actually happened is that um, not just will load, will go over here, execute all the file over there and create all the variables. And one thing that people get confused with is that they try to access entity um, and they are not able. So if we try to do new entity, for example, it's not going to work. It's going to say that entity is not defined. And Basically, how it works with Node.js is that if you define a variable with the keyword var, it means that the variable is local. And by local, I mean it's only accessible from within this file. So if I try to access entity, it's not going to work. It's kind of like trying to access the self from outside this section. So if I try to access self over here, it's not going to work. Um, so there are multiple ways to access a variable outside of a file. There's the um, official official way with exports, but it's kind of tricky and it does not work with the with browsers. So I'm gonna keep it for another video, but don't worry, I um, do plan on covering it. So the easy way to access a variable anywhere in the code is to simply remove the var and just do entity equal something. And by doing this, it's not going to be a local uh, variable, it's going to be global, so accessible anywhere. So this is not like the most recommended way, especially if you have a large project, but for what we have right now, um, it will be enough. But I do plan on covering the export method eventually. So I'm just gonna remove all the var for the bullet entity and player. So now all the things over here can be accessed from app.js. Now one thing to know however is that all, even though we can access from app.js the variable defined in entity, entity cannot access the variable declared with var. So it's not really a problem because most of the variable over here don't refer to variable defined in app.js. The two main ones, actually the two only ones, um, is init pack. So init pack was defined over here with a var, so it's not accessible from here. And there's also the remove pack. So one way to fix that would be to simply remove the var over here and over there. But this is introducing even more global variables. Normally you want to keep it really um, tiny. Um, so normally it's only the class, like the, the way I would recommend it if you don't want to use the export method is to only um, make the class um, global. So that's, yeah. Um, so there are multiple ways to be able to do that. First, 
first way would be to make that into a class, but that's not really a nice way. Uh, one thing you realize is that the init pack and the remove pack are only used within that function. So, and it's pretty much only related with entity. So what I would do is just take that and place it over here. So after doing that, it's great because entity can access init pack and remove pack. The bad thing, however, is that from here, I'm no longer able to access the variable. But don't worry, there is a trick to it. Um, what we are going to do is we are going to create a function on the entity and it's going to be called get frame update data. And this will return the two elements. So init pack and remove pack. And this is accessible from app.js because it's under entity and entity is global. So we could do packs equal this. So this is going to work. Do that, do that, that, that. There we go. So even though that code would work, it's not really clean because th there's too much logic about how entity work inside the app.js. So what we could do is just take all of that actually and put that logic over here. So it would look, in the end, it would look um, something like this. So again, um, get frame update data is a package containing the init pack, the remove pack, and the update pack. We reset um, the arrays and then we return the pack. So over here, so packs equal this, and then packs init pack pack and remove pack. So that's a lot cleaner. All the logic is now with the entity module, like all the entity logic is with the entity module, that's perfect. And all the update logic with the socket is in the socket, well, app.js, which handles all the sockets. So that's a lot better. Okay, so the next step would be to add the item and inventory logic into the game. So what I'm going to do is create a new file and just copy paste without changing anything. So just copy paste the code from uh, my HTML5 single player series and just save it. So make sure you save it in the client folder because this um, will need to be accessed from both the server and the client. So put it into the client. Like the server can access the client, but the client cannot access the server. So anyway, um, here's the inventory and the items. So both of them were not defined with var, so they are accessible anywhere. I just need to make sure to um, load it. In that case, it would be client inventory. And on the client side, um, over here, it's going to be client slash inventory. So now inventory and items are accessible from within the server and the client. So yeah, if you remember correctly, basically we have an inventory, which is a list of items. We can add item, remove item, add item, and refresh renderer. So refresh renderer, um, it will not work on the server. So this is client only. And um, yeah. Um, because we, we need to access the, the page, the HTML5 page, and it's not gonna work. Item, it's gonna work anywhere. It's just the list of items we have, potion and enemy. So we have the inventory. Now what we are going to do is that when we create um, a new player over here, we're gonna add a new inventory, a new attribute. That will be the inventory. So we create an inventory, and from there we can like add item. All the players will have a different um, inventory. So we could add item, we could remove item. All the logic we have for the single player, it's going to work instantly with multiplayer. Um, but there's a little catch. The the art part with inventory management is not really the logic to add and remove item. It's updating the client because yes, I can add an item, 
but the client will not be notified that he has a potion now. So we need to have a a way to send the new invent the new information to the client so the client is able to refresh what's being shown on the screen. So to be able to send data, um, the inventory will need to have access to the socket. So what I'm going to do is um, a few things. So when the plug connects, we have access to the socket over here. I'm gonna give it as a parameter to the constructor for the player. So by adding this over here, this means I'm able to access the socket via param and I'm gonna give it to the inventory over here. So in the inventory now, I have access to the socket and I'm gonna add the socket on myself. So add a new <coughs> attribute for that. Okay, so the next thing is, um, like I said over here, refresh renderer, this is called every time the inventory changes. So that's quite handy. Um, on the server, when we refresh, what we want to do is not like change what is being shown, but we want to send, what we want to do is to send, emit a new package, let's call it update inventory, with the items, the new items. So if we are a server, we want to do that. If we are a client, we want to do that. Now in order to be to know if you're a server or a client, there are many ways, I don't want to get into them. But the easiest one will be, if socket is defined, then we are on the server. I'm gonna change that eventually, but for now, this is what I'm going to do. So if socket is defined, it's only going to be defined on the server side. So if it's defined, I assume I'm, I'm on the server and I emit that packet. So yeah, now that we send the package update inventory to the client, the, we need to change the client so he actually listens to that type of package. So what we are going to do is on the client, the client will have an inventory and it's important to make it null. This is how we know that we are on the client or on the server. And then we are going to um, listen to the update inventory package with that code. And whenever there is an update, item will be the list of items. We set the items and then we call refresh renderer. And refresh renderer if there is no socket, so if it's not a server, we are going to refresh the inventory with the exact same code that I was using in the single player um, tutorial. And the final thing we need to add is the div, um, the container for the text, so over here. This was also covered in the other video. Okay, so now let's test uh, what we have created. So let's start a server, log in with a random username. Um, so the ID of our player is this over here. There we go. And if you remember correctly, if we copy paste a line in the chat that starts with a slash, it's gonna evaluate this on the server. So let's do that. And there we go, we got our potion. Now one thing to know is that we cannot use the potion. We haven't done the code to use the potion. So it's an error. Um, so I'm planning to cover that in the next video. So how to use an item and prevent cheating as well, because that's um, an important thing to do. And um, probably make some cool items. For example, change map could be um, when you use an item, for example, or when you use an item, it shoots a bunch of bullets, stuff like that. Um, so I guess you hope the video and don't forget to click the annotation on the screen to go check out the next video. See ya.